Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to send an email from your Expo React Native app. So first off you're going to want to import button, so that's just so that you can actually click that and send the email. I'm also going to install the Expo Print and Expo Mail Composer packages, and I'm going to use the Use Effect hooks to check the availability of mail and the Use State hook to um, take some inputs from the user and use that to send the email. I'm going to import star as mail composer from that expo mail composer. That way I can use that to check the availability and also send the email. So first up, let's check the availability. So we're going to have the state variable is available and a setter for that set is available. And we're going to use that use state hook with the default value. By default, we'll set that to false. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to show that it's not available if it's not available. And if it is available, we'll show that it is available. Now we're going to configure our use effect hook. So basically, we want this to run once, basically, when the app first loads up. And so we've got that um, nothing in those square brackets there that we're passing as a parameter. Um, and we're going to write a function that's just going to check the availability of the email. And then we're going to call that function. So to check the availability, we'll just await the mail composer dot is available async. And then we can use that value to set the state variable and that will just cause a re-render if um, the mail composer is available. So we're going to need to call that function and there we go. So you can see nothing's changed but it's because I haven't updated this text here yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to update that to use that state variable. So if it's available, we're going to show a button that will allow us to send the mail. And we're going to have a function that's going to allow us to send the mail and I'll define that function in a minute. And we're going to have, if it's not available, some text that says that mail's not available. Just need to define that function send mail so that my um, application will compile. Oh well, won't have an error. And there you go, you can see on Android it's got the send mail option there. So now let's go ahead and actually write some code for sending mail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compose a email message so i'm going to use this compose mail composer dot compose a sync function and you pass that some options so some of the options include the subject so i could say hi friends you also want to include the body of the message And you can also include some recipients. So I've got testedexample.com as one of my recipients and I could add another one if I wanted to. I define this in an array so I can have as many recipients as I want. And hiredexample.com. You can also define like um, any CC recipients or BCC recipients if you had any that you wanted to define. You could do them the same way as you um, specify the recipients, but I'm not going to include any today for this demo. I'm just showing you those options there now. You can specify whether it's HTML, and that basically would be if the body's HTML. 
um, and then it will render the HTML and you can also specify any attachments you have. I'll go over the attachment side of things just a little bit later. I'll show you how to add a PDF to it. Um, the simplest way and why I'm importing the Expo print is actually so that I can do the attachment very simply. So when you click send email, it's going to open up your mail. And if you've actually got um, mail set up, then it will allow you to do this. If you haven't, you'll need to set it up. So you can see that it's got from, to, subject, and in the message. And I could click to send it. I could click to add attachment. It just goes through whatever um, your default mail tool is on your app, on your Android or iOS device. So now that we've got that sorted out and we can send, I've shown you how you can send like a hard-coded composed message. I'm going to show you how to allow the user to add recipients if they wanted to, add a message if they wanted to and all that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a state variable for the recipients and I'm just going to have that set to empty to begin with. So I've got the default state of the empty array. I'm going to do the the same sort of thing with subject, but this one, the default state for subject will just be um, undefined. We won't have anything set for subject by default and the user will have to enter that themselves. I'll do the same for body. Note that I'm not going to show you any validation here. Um, if you're wanting to do validation, you can sort of figure that out on your own. I'm just keeping this quite simple for the purposes of the demo. This final um, state variable email is going to be the current email that we want to add to the recipients. And now I'm going to go ahead and sub in my state variables into my compose async options. And that means that when I send the email, it will send to the what the user specified. I'm also going to import a text input so that I can collect input from the user and actually get values for those state variables. So now that I've got everything imported and my state variables set up, I can set up my text inputs to receive values from the user. So first one's just going to be the subject. And on, on the change of the text, I'm going to update that subject using that set subject um, function return from the use state hook. Also going to give this a placeholder so that the user knows what's expected. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the email body and the email that I want the user to be able to specify who they want to email with. I'll just update those on change texts to be the relevant setters. And also update the placeholder to be um, what the relevant placeholder indication is. Cool, so now I have three text inputs, subject, body, and email. But I'm also going to want to be able to, when the user specifies that they want to add the email, add it to the recipients so that, as that's what's actually, who the email is actually sent to. So I'm going to have a button here called Add Recipient. And on press, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this function that I'm going to define add recipient. So I'm going to use the spread operator here to basically create a clone of the recipients array that I can then append to and then I can update the recipient state variable using that set recipients function. So once I've added that email, that new email, I can set that recipients and I can also set that email to empty because I've added that um, email now. But 
by save, you can see that button's there. I'm also going to want to be able to show the recipients because it's probably useful to the user to sort of be able to see who they're going to be sending the email to. Um, and you may even choose to add a clear button so that if they've added a, a um, email recipient they're not wanting to send to, they can clear. Or you could add it individually for each recipient that you have the option to just clear out a specific one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this map operator on the recipients array and basically return a new component for each of the recipients. And it's just going to display that recipient on screen in a text component. I'm using that index as a key because I know it's going to be unique. And then I'm just going to call my show recipients function. So now I'm just going to show you how you can, um, how it works once you've got the user supplying their information that they want. So I've got my subject, hello all. I've got my body. This is my message. I'm just going to add in a little if statement here to check whether the recipient's length is zero. If the length of the recipient is zero, it basically means there's no recipients and I can return a message that says there's no recipients. So you can see they've got no recipients at the moment. Then I can go ahead and add some recipients. So I'm just going to add test at example.com. When I click it, it will add to the recipients, and you can see that's updated there. And I can add hi at example.com too. So you can see I've got two recipients, and when I click send mail, it should um, go ahead and show me this message. So you can see the subjects, hello all, and the body is, this is my message, and the recipients were as I specified. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to show you how to add an attachment. So the reason you might want to add an attachment is maybe you've got some reports you want to send from your um, application, but you could have many other reasons for wanting to add a attachment. So I'm importing um, print from Expo Print, and that's just going to allow me to create a PDF which I can easily attach to my email. But you can actually get your um, file URIs from different places, just depending on what you're wanting. You could get them from the gallery, you could get them from the actual files um, applica um, application. So yeah, it just depends on what you want. So I'm going to call this print to file async. It's going to return a file URI, which I can then use to add an attachment to my email. So I'm just going to create a very simple PDF that has a header which says my PDF. I'm getting the content URI just to show you something. So when you send an SMS, you actually need a content URI. But for mail, for some reason, you don't actually need a content URI. So if you try to use the content URI, it's going to fail for mail. Um, and if you try to use the file URI, it's going to fail for SMS. So you just kind of need to work out which, which situations require which type of URI and go from there. But I just want to sort of cover this just because some people might have issues where they're trying to provide a content URI and as that's what they might expect might be useful, um, but it might cause an error message. I'm just going to go ahead and show that. And because I'm awaiting a few things inside this, I need to make this function async. So 
So do you see there was an error message there that um, came about because of me using the content URI. If I were to just go ahead and use the normal URI, that should just fix that issue. So I'll show you that now. You can see that I've got my PDF there and if I click on it, it should show the actual PDF. And I don't need that content URI. So now I'm just going to show you the same thing on iOS. I haven't got email set up, so it should show you that if it's not if email isn't available, it will just show that it's not available. So you can see there, instead of a button to send email, it just says email is not available. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All of my code's going to be available on GitHub.